Greetings and welcome to this special edition of Happenings at 2715. My name is Kurt Gibson, and before introducing our guest today, I'd like to take this moment to say how glad we are here at Happenings to be back with our audience today. The start of 2020 has certainly been challenging uh, for not only our podcast, but society as a whole. We had planned to do some special things around our boys' basketball state finals this year with our podcast, but when the COVID-19 situation closed school attendance and, and gatherings, uh, I put those plans on hold, unfortunately. As we've all heard, these are truly unprecedented times in our world, and as we try to make sense of all that's happening, we want to remind you, our audience, about how important it is to take care of yourself and those under your care. The more we can do that, and the more we can follow the guidance from our government and medical leaders, the sooner life will return to normal. During these times of social distancing and self-isolation, though, it's important to maintain as positive an outlook as possible. It's critical that we stay healthy not only physically, but mentally. Tough times call for tough people, and as a society, the more each of us can do individually to stay connected to one another, the more our mental health will remain strong. And here today to talk with me about the importance of mental health and things people can do during these times to be of good mental health uh, is Stacy Lambert, Assistant Executive Director of IHSA and the Association's Sports Medicine Advisory Committee Liaison. Stacy, you've been a frequent guest of, uh, here on our show, but welcome back to Happenings. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, we're glad you could carve some time out today to to speak with our with our audience. So, how let's just sort of begin with how how you're doing. Um, what kinds of things are you doing right now to stay busy? Well, I'm doing well. I won't lie. The first week of um, isolation, I guess, was a challenge for me. I struggled a little bit mentally with with things, but. I have since kind of found my groove and um, kept myself a little more active, getting some fresh air every day, making sure to um, spend that quality time with my kids. And I've, I find myself in a much better place than I was, you know, to start this little experiment here. So doing well, um, feeling much Good. more like myself, much, yeah. much happier than I was maybe a week or 10 days ago. Yeah, maybe for the first, I know for me, the first couple of days felt a little bit like um, when there's a break from um, the school, uh, the school calendar, whether it's around a holiday or, or whatnot, there was sort of that feeling, maybe like a long weekend kind of uh, feeling. I've, I've tried, I think sort of what you're driving at there, I've tried to stay in my routine as much as I can, so it feels the same, even though it's certainly, you know, not the same. Um, but I've been trying to, you know, get the same amount of sleep that I've been getting, trying to, you know, get up when I get up and go through my my various daily rituals to try to stay on track as much as I can. Certainly the weather changing uh, has has been a good thing. It does feel good to be outside, whether you're walking or biking or running or doing, you know, whatever it is you can do to stay active. Yes, I think that has helped tremendously for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. I, I We've had some people, you know, doing some of those things you hear that we shouldn't be doing in in, um, in my neighborhood, but uh, hopefully the, those folks who are playing basketball or whatever aren't going to uh, get sick and whatnot. But uh, what kinds of things – what kinds of things are you doing to stay connected to others? I know we we're talking a little bit about being active and whatnot, but how are you also trying to stay connected to other people? Yeah, um, you know, I'm on a lot of text chains and some group chats, and all those things have been good and helpful to um, to keep myself connected with my friends in the outside world. Um, what I've really found, you know, is some comfort in my neighborhood here. I'm in kind of out in the country a little bit and somewhat isolated, but everyone's out and walking and people will usually stop from one side of the street to the next and say hello or have a brief conversation and just kind of getting to know some of the neighbors that maybe I didn't know so well. That's probably been, you know, the greatest blessing of this oh, is good. that I'm, I've been talking to folks that 
I've lived here for three years, but I really haven't had a in-depth conversation with. So now we have the time, obviously, to, you know, stand across the street from each other and, and get to know each other a little better. And I think that's been, that's been a good thing in our neighborhood. I, I see a lot of people doing that as they're out walking up and down the street here. And wouldn't that be something I know, uh, as I alluded to, you work with our sports medicine advisory committee and wouldn't, I think you as a group have had some conversations over the past year about um, the importance of mental health and how that affects not only student athletes, but all of us. But I think that's probably giving you some comfort to be able to uh, have that interaction. I know that's the one thing I miss a lot is that face-to-face interaction with people I'm used to uh, seeing on a day-to-day basis. And so to interact with others is probably uh, refreshing and it probably probably what this is doing this pandemic is doing is slowing us down oh, we're always definitely. in a rush to go here go there we have a hundred things to get done but this has really slowed us down and allowed us to reconnect on a really a more local basis I absolutely would agree with that you know I think everyone is spending more time at home, more time around the kitchen table, more time cooking dinner together, spending time playing board games, things that, you know, we always say, oh, we should do that, but we never do because we are so busy. So I think that has shown a lot of people that there's this opportunity here to, you know, reconnect with your family as well and spend that quality time together instead of in your car driving from one game to the next. Yeah. How are you? uh, Are you able to stay connected? Uh, I know you talked about some text change uh, and whatnot, maybe through other social media platforms. But how about being able to see others? Are you doing anything? Uh, Would you encourage people to, you know, regardless of the platform you might use, if you can stay connected through some online Meetings is a pretty dramatic word, but in some kind of online fashion, using some of those meeting platforms, if you can see others, do you think that's also a good thing people could look to do during these times? Definitely. I know that, um, you know, some folks have been Zooming with their family who's not in the same area as them. We've been FaceTiming with my family there, not in the Bloomington normal area. So that's been good to be able to see you know, my parents, my brothers, my nieces and nephews just and have my kids see their cousins so they can visit with them as well. We've done the same thing with my husband's family who's not in the area. So it is a good opportunity to see each other um, face to face, so to speak, through a device. But at least, you know, you can see that person, talk to them. It makes you feel more connected than just a, a conversation or on the phone or a text. Yeah. Now, what was one thing I know I saw that you, uh, through your, uh, through your Twitter feed started? Oh, it's probably been a long week now. Uh, what was that that you started? I thought it was a, you know, it was a really good idea. And talk a little bit about that and, and, uh, where you got, if you want, where you get maybe got came up with that idea and, uh, some of the benefit that came from that. Yeah. I have been working on our all state academic team banquet and part of that banquet Um, I have the opportunity to interview all of the student athletes who are selected as members of the Allstate academic team. And while I was listening to their interviews, so many of them talk about the benefits of being a part of a team and, you know, relying on your teammates, what you learn from your teammates. So I sent an email out to that group of 26 students and I challenged them to post anything on social media, on any platform, what's positive about being a member of a team. I really wanted, you know, to get get some good positive information out there on social media because everything was so doom and gloom about the virus and staying at home and shelter in place. So we kind of started this challenge, you know, you you text or you post whatever it is about being a member of a team and how it's had a positive impact on your life. And then you tag teammates in that post as well so that, you know, they're part of it and they know – um to do the same thing and it continued on and on and on. So it was a really good good opportunity for those kids to reflect on the positivity of high school athletics and activities and share that with, you know, their peers. And what was the hashtag you used on that? If people wanted to go back and and search that on Twitter, it was team IHSA. Okay. Team hashtag team IHSA. Very good. What are some other things either that you're seeing, um, other people doing online, maybe apart from hashtag Team IHSA, or what? A, what is some of your research showing or telling you that are some other 
tips or strategies people might want to consider employing during these times when we aren't as connected as we uh, as we maybe would like to be? Yeah, I think a couple of things we've already talked about, you know, trying to find some way to be active, whether it's taking a walk down your street, participating in something in your yard or on your driveway, you know, a basketball game on your driveway or playing catch in your yard. Or There's a lot of ways for our student athletes to continue to be connected to their sports and activities this spring, even though they're not able to get together with their teammates. Um, I've heard of some coaches employ, uh, using Zoom to do a Zoom meeting with their team and um, give their team, you know, daily challenges that they're asking them to do. Um, one thing that, you know, in this saying it's all great to use all these online platforms, but it's also something that we have to be able to step away from for at least a, a part of the day and kind of let our brains take a break from that. There's so much information out there right now. And, you know, I'd caution folks to to read every bit of it because that's not helping with anyone's anxiety level is reading everything. So make sure that you take a time to step away from your phone or your, you know, your feeds, your Facebook feed, your Twitter feed. And, um, you know, whatever that means, step away. If it means step away and read a book, step away and go outside, step away and bake or cook something, but find something else to do that is not social media or or gaming that, you know, separates yourself from that, that kind of interaction, have a, a, a one-on-one in-person interaction with your family if you can. Yeah. Might be a good time to try to learn a new, uh, I'm going to use the word skill, whether it's like baking or cooking, um, learn a musical instrument. I don't know, you know, but learn, learn something new that you have always wanted to do. I know I've cleaned about every closet I can clean in my house. <laughs> Uh, so I've got to I've got to go to something else now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It, it's yeah. good to keep those goals, that goal setting. You know, so many of us are goal setters mm-hmm. in this athletics and activities field. So set that goal for yourself that maybe you're going to run a mile today and you're going to run a mile and a half tomorrow, or today you're going to learn to bake banana bread or whatever that goal may be. But mm-hmm. you know, set set those new goals for yourself that are different from the sports and activities goals that you're used to setting. Yeah, and thinking of our student athletes out there, I'll uh I'll get you out of here on this question. What would what would you tell all those student athletes out there, maybe even their parents, uh, as we, you know, have a hiatus, a sort of a you know, a shutdown for the moment, we hope, uh, on spring sports and activities about, you know, what would you say to those folks about hanging in there or just persevering through these times? Yeah, patience is a virtue. I know it's really hard to be patient right now because everybody wants to get going and get participating again, especially now that the weather is getting nicer. But I would just encourage everyone to stay patient. Do everything that you can at home to keep yourself in shape. Um, that's certainly going to help, you know, if and when we're able to resume sports and activities. So um, be patient. I know everyone's probably a little on edge or maybe a little grumpy with each other, or it's easier to get grumpy with each other when you're in tight quarters all day long. So any opportunity that you can to get out together as a family, throw the ball around, kick the ball around. Maybe a parent can run a stopwatch for a a track athlete or measure for a field athlete. Any of those things that you can do, you know, that keeps your skills sharp and you know, you can do it together. There, even though you're isolating yourself, you're, you can still isolate yourself with your family and spend that quality time together. Yeah, you know, um, th- those are great. Those are great uh, thoughts. And you know, I'm also reminded that I and I understand that the the competition, the being together with your teammates and competing against somebody else's school is the the cherry on the proverbial athletic Sunday, if you will. But we can't lose sight of the fact that all the work and the commitment that people make leading up to those competitions are are instilling in our athletes also those skills that they're going to use later on in life to be successful people. And um, as as they're being patient and hoping and waiting for a spring season to come, I don't think we also want to lose sight of that people are better off for having been involved and, and remaining and continuing that involvement than they are if they hadn't ever participated as a part of a team uh, or not. So we have to remember that mm-hmm. as well. 
Well, Stacey, thanks for taking time today to speak with our audience about the ways we can not only stay connected and together during this pandemic, but also keep our mental health in a in a good spot. When life throws us something that there really isn't a playbook for, it makes it more difficult to sometimes know how to respond, but certainly the tips and suggestions you offered today will help us uh, in that regards. And on behalf of our entire production crew here at Happenings at 2715, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today for this broadcast. We thank you for your continued support. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves.